In this thrilling episode, the conflict between Xion and Wulin intensifies as Xion unleashes his most powerful spells to thwart his opponent, including a fiery falcon and a blazing guardian. As Will defends himself against these fierce attacks, he discovers that Xion harbors deep-seated resentment and mixed feelings toward him. At a pivotal moment, Colette intervenes to separate them and reveals her secret plan. But the surprises don't end there. Julius makes a powerful return at the Academy Festival and Will challenges him in an unexpected showdown. Will Julius emerge victorious? And what is the true reason behind the deep hatred between Sheehan and Will? Find out all this and more in today's episode of this epic anime. The episode begins with Will as a child, and Sion talks about him, saying he was so pitiful that it would make you feel sorry for him. We see a piece of paper on Will's back that says talentless, worthless, but Sion burns it and tells him, I will make you one of my followers, and this way you won't feel miserable and sad. However, Will doesn't listen and walks away, prompting Sion to grab him and say, Don't ignore me, but when Will looks at him, his gaze is sharp and terrifying, and he says, Get out of my face. Sion, however, follows him and says, Will was kind. He never looked at us with contempt, adding, Since that day, I have despised and hated him deeply. Back in the present, we see Sion still attacking Will, who is barely dodging his attacks. Will retaliates by directing a blast of fire at Sion, and says, you're jumping around like an animal. Are you only interested in survival? Come on, attack me. But Will replies, I can't do that. We're on the same team, and I want to keep my promise to Sir Donan and the others. Zion then says, if you won't fight, I'll burn you to ashes. Will thinks to himself, is fighting him my only option? Meanwhile, the commentator and students watch, with the commentator saying, what is going on? Team six was making steady progress, but now the teammates Sion and Will are fighting each other. Teacher Edward comments, Whatever the reason, fighting among team members is absolutely unacceptable. Even considering the principles of Crown Assault, we can assume that the Tower's scouts will see this as a significant mark against them. Then we see one of the scouts speak up, saying, Up until this point, he was making remarkable progress, but in the end, he's just a schoolboy. With the points he's earned, he's ranked fourth in his year, but this problem overshadows that Will's friends start to wonder, asking, what are Will and Sion doing? We've never seen two teammates fight like this before, and they appear worried about what's happening. At that moment, Iris approaches them and asks to sit with them, saying, it's been a long time since we've seen each other. Can I sit with you? I've been standing here the whole time. They agree, and she starts cheering for Will. Rusty responds, that's unexpected of you, cheering for someone in particular. I thought you'd be the type to follow the crowd. Iris replies, To be honest, I heard about Will from a certain someone. At first, I wasn't interested in him at all, but now I'm totally obsessed with him. Rusty says, It seems Will is really popular now. It appears you love him more than anything else. Iris responds, Love is indeed a heavy burden. Meanwhile, Colette is seen fleeing from Julius and his ice attacks, saying to herself, I need to hurry and stop Will and sign. Julius then speaks, saying, What's the matter? Why are you running like that? If you keep running, no one will see you as worthy of the title Princess of the Earth. He attacks her with his ice magic, but she manages to block it, only to fall into one of the traps in the area where Julius strikes her with great force. At the same time, the students watching through the magical crystals see multiple copies of Julius in different locations and are shocked. They realize that he has cloned himself to confront all the students simultaneously. Then Fingal speaks up, saying, did you come to face me, Julius? Julius responds, yes, I came, and I will use my secret weapon to defeat all of you. But before he can, Fingal attacks him with his powerful magic and destroys him, only to find out that it was just an ice clone of Julius. Fingal says, this is to be expected of you, Julius. Who would have thought you'd hide such a clever trick? As he grabs a piece of ice, he realizes it's from a magia finder. Meanwhile, the audience and students are wondering who will win speculating whether the victory will be between Julius or Fingal. They note that Team 6 was very close to winning if Cyan hadn't done what he did. They also question what Cyan is doing and why he is so angry with Will. Another student speaks up, saying, I can somewhat understand Sean's feelings. Then we get a glimpse of the painful past that Will has endured. He reflects, thinking, why does everyone bully me? I don't want anything from them. I just want them to leave me alone. He realizes that he doesn't have much time left, 
and is determined to achieve his goal of reaching his friend Elvi no matter the cost. After that, we see Soyon still relentlessly attacking Will. He begins to form his strongest attack yet, summoning a massive fiery falcon. He unleashes the attack, and although Will narrowly avoids it, the giant beast swoops down to strike again. Will realizes that Sion is using the fiery falcon as a distraction, allowing him to launch a full force attack. And then casts a specific spell, summoning a fire guardian to assault Will. This makes Will tense up, but he quickly thinks that if he can cut off the guardian's wings, it will be his chance to defeat Sion. He knows he must also destroy the guardian's core, or it will never stop. The fire guardian charges after Will, trying to strike him with its flames, but Will deflects the attacks with all his might. During this struggle, Will understands that Sion is mainly using the Guardian for defense and to buy time to do something else. However, the Guardian attacks from all directions, leaving Will under constant pressure. The scene shifts to the arena where the audience is gathered. Among them is Edward, who is thoroughly impressed by Sion's power. He thinks to himself that Sion has surpassed the level of a mere student. Not only can he use a high-level fire spell, but he has also summoned a guardian. Sion has managed to execute such precise magical control on his own, which is remarkable. We then see a group of teachers observing the battle between Will and Shine. Raj asks his assistant for information about Sion. The assistant replies that Sion's full name is Sion Alistair, the heir of the Alistair family, known as the Lords of Fire Magic. According to the Observer's reports, Shiokna's potential but he is ranked behind Lihanna Owensu's and the other top three students. It's understood that Sion had the motivation to improve and break through, which is why his actions are so unpredictable. Just when people think these students are merely inexperienced boys, one of them emerges and transforms into a formidable falcon. Raj then instructs his assistant to inform Karyot that there's an unexpectedly promising crop of talent on the way. Then we return to the battle between Sayo and Will, Shion mocks Will, saying he was much better when he defeated the evil warden. Will asks Sion why he is doing this, as there is no reason for them to fight. Sion replies that he definitely hates Will after being humiliated and mocked. He admits that he is always furious at Will and has lost count of how many times he imagined getting revenge on him. Will responds that now he just wants to defeat Julius. Such is Disney saying that just seeing Will provokes him to the point of unbearable frustration. He can't stand how Will refuses to give up despite being talentless and how he constantly ignores him. Will is deeply saddened by Sion's words, shocked that Sion sees him this way. Sion continues, saying that if Will says anything else, he will crush him. He confesses that, deep down, he wanted Will to recognize him, which is why he feels he must accept Will's challenge with all his strength, and then unleashes his magic on Will. Will thinks to himself that the Guardian will block any clumsy attempts to get close, so he needs to time his counterattack carefully. He knows Sion is using wide-range destructive magic and the Guardian to defend himself, but Will has already seen the Guardian's path. Will charges toward the beast, parrying its strikes and cutting through its core, causing it to explode. He then moves toward Sion, preparing to use his magic again, but Colette suddenly intervenes placing a barrier between them and telling them to stop. Both Sion and Will are surprised. Will asks her where Julius is, and she tells him that she struck him once, and then he disappeared. Sean yells at Colette, saying, Do you see yourself as a noblewoman, revealing yourself in such an unseemly manner? Colette angrily replies, You're the one who started this fight in the first place. She then tells Will to go ahead and find Julius, promising to handle things here. Sion declares that he won't let anyone stand in his way, even if it's her. Colette responds fiercely, you're the one who got in my way. We had a chance to slip past the tower's scouts. Will thanks her and apologizes to Sion, saying, we'll have a real fight next time. The scene then shifts to the Academy Festival. Mike announces in just a few moments. After overcoming all the obstacles, the main teams will enter the arena. Now who will be the first to appear? We see that it is Team 9, led by Julius. Mike adds that no one here can stand against them. But just in time, Will arrives and angrily challenges Julius, saying, The episode ends here, with a message encouraging viewers to stay tuned for upcoming episodes, reminding them to subscribe and activate the notification bell to keep up with the latest updates.